how's everyone doing? I'm here mixing a uh, song for a band called Scarburst. Um, it's a really nice song. Uh, I don't know if you remember a week and a bit ago, I did a kind of a mix setup on it. I was going through some plugins and bits that I had, and I was going uh, doing a mix setup. And um, yeah, but I didn't actually mix the song. I was just um, just having a tidy up of some of the files and putting some plugins and whatever. So um, I'm actually going to do that mix now. And this is the first episode since I've named this show the High Past Show. And if you're wondering why it's called uh, the High Past Show, it's because on all the signals that I want to mix, I always want to put a high pass filter on them. So that explains that one. In future, I will be um, streaming on the Facebook page. I'm going to probably do a couple more on my own personal um, wall, but then I'm going to stream it on the Facebook page. So if you haven't... Um, already uh been on and uh liked that page which i quite a few people have now that's great but um please do because i'll be going on there right so um hello so that's rachel who else have i not said hello to hello matt how you doing um sarah glad didn't hello to my mum hello jace um sam says today been uh been out enjoying the weather in the garden ah well that's good to know right let's go to the cubase screen <clears throat> right, just because uh, some of you won't have seen my setup the other day, um, I just kind of coloured some of the tracks, I think, and uh, I did some alignments of um, room and other bits and pieces. Uh, the, yeah, the room and the overheads. Um, so I'll go through it in a minute, but let's just have a listen through to the song and see uh, see where we're at with it at the moment. I'm going to mute my mic for the listen through so you don't get any kind of phasing in the room um, so yeah enjoy <laughs> Texas going out today 
only you could have seen me dancing around in my uh, kitchen while that was playing, because I've got it quite loud here. Um, it would have been very embarrassing um, if anyone's uh, seen me dance. Hopefully you haven't. Trust me, that's good for you and good for me. Right, um, let's start with some stuff. So where did I get up to? Let's have a look. I've already made the groups by the looks of things and routed various bits, which is good. And I've put um, some bits on the bass drum and the snare drum, but I'm gonna get rid of those because I think that was just for demo purposes last time. So yeah, let's start from the top. Everyone ready? Here we go. Bass drum. Ah yes, I remember what I wanted to do now. So I'm going to start by putting the uh, SSL channel on this. What EQ have I got on it already? So I've got a high pass on it and I trimmed out some frequencies that were annoying me. And then I was going to... Uh, it's annoying when it does that. The plug-in disappears behind another window. One second. <laughs> there we go. I'm using a, a piece of... I'm using a piece of software called OBS to stream out and uh, it stays on top the whole time. So if a plug-in goes behind it, I can't see it. So right, here we go. I've got the SSL channel on the bass drum. Um, I might end up triggering this bass drum. I'm not 100% sure at the moment. We will uh, have to see. Um, let me just load the basic bass drum setting that they give and tweak from there. certain solidness I'm looking for at the, at the bottom end. Might roll some of that. Right, I'm going to start, I'm going to use my uh, intuition here and I'm going to um, just start by triggering it. Um, because I think the bass drum sound was processed a little bit and it's quite clicky and I want some uh, nice tight bottom end on it. So... Um, I'm going to open up this and go to hit points and um, basically detect the hit points like that and that should have caught pretty much all the bass drums which it looks like it has and then I'm going to create MIDI notes Right, another window's come up somewhere that I'm not seeing. This isn't going to work. I'll move OBS over to the other screen because otherwise it's going to keep hiding my windows. Uh, I'm going to go to a new MIDI track. Um, and I want to have it a, uh, a dynamic velocity and I want them all to be on C1. So hopefully that has worked and I should have a MIDI track at the bottom, which I do with all the bass drums mapped out. Come on. There we go, right. So I'm gonna mute the uh, original bass drum and I'm gonna add in a software instrument and I'm going to use the IK Multimedia um, Modo drums, which does take a while to load noticed that. Um, I'm just going to go to the Rock Custom Kit for now and um, tweak from there. I'm just going to move that MIDI to there and see what that sounds like. And I need to boost that significantly. Boost the uh, velocities. Oh yes. Okay. So I'm going to cut all the um, 
the room mics and stuff out of it because I don't need them. And the overheads as well. I'm going to turn down the snare and all the toms and everything that are ringing nice and naturally. I know none of these probably have anything, but I'm just turning them off anyway. And then I'm going to edit the uh, bass drum. I'm going to uh, cue drummer crying, yeah, because I'm triggering stuff. I'm not triggering because it it's badly played, though. I'm triggering it because the previous engineer has done some pre-processing and uh, and I kind of want to have a bit more control. So it's no, no, certainly no um, no slight on him. Oh yes, that's more what I'm looking for. not 100% convinced by the EQ within the Modo drum, I'll be honest with you. So I'm going to uh, do my usual, I'm going to treat it as if it was a real bass drum and use my uh, usual techniques. stuff around. So that's what we had. That's the actual uh, <coughs> original microphone. Which in here is quite kind of slappy and tinny. And then the triggered one got a little bit more a little bit more punch to it so I'm now going to put the SSL channel that I would have done if it was the mic over it and treat it the same load up the uh, the bass drum preset and just pull back some of what they do Okay, bass drum is okay for the moment. Let's have a listen to the snare. So, any, uh, does anyone else uh, feel a little bit of um, Only Fools and Horses at the beginning of that? I love it. That's cool. Right, so I'm going to put in um, an EQ on that go through and start listening a little bit just listen and see what um, what frequencies need to be pulled out what's clouding it all so that one there is really clouding it Just 
taking a tiny bit out makes all the difference. You don't need to take it a lot out. It can, um, it can uh, just have, you know, just a two or three dB of, of that. It's, that's all you need. So I was getting distracted by some comments there. Um, who, else am I, who else has come online to say hello to? Hello, Neil. Hello, Christine. Have I said that hello to you already? I think I have. I'm not sure. Hello, Scott. Uh, hello, Paul. Hello, Martin. Hello, Will. Whistle about 2.3k there, so I'm going to pull that whistle out a bit. I'm going to put a high, high shelf on it. So that's what the snare was before a bit of EQ. Now I'll put the EQ on. Hmm. Right, let me get uh, an SSL channel over that as well. Uh, not a stereo one, mono one. That'll do. Uh, load the snare preset, but I'm going to dial back some of this EQ because it's pretty harsh. Their presets are a little bit over the top for my liking. I mean, sometimes with these channels, you don't have to do a lot with them. You can leave them pretty flat, and it's just having the sound of the channel that, that just seems to warm it up or improve it somehow. It's not that you really need to do much. I've... I've definitely put the SSL compressor over stuff and just left it on um, without it even tickling the signal. And it still sounds great, you know. Um, because even when it's doing effectively nothing, it's still modeling the sound of that channel. Okay, so that Modo drum, the trigger one, I want to send to, um, <clears throat> I want to send that to my uh, group here of close drums. So again, I'm now, now it's triggered, I'm just treating that trigger as if it was a microphone, I'm not, um, I'm kind of forgetting that it's a trigger now. So let's also have a listen now to the overheads and the room. Let's start with the overheads. Don't want to move on to toms. I'll start with the bass drum and the snare drum. Yeah, um, Paul's just said, I suppose the SCO has the gate option to tune out. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it does have the compressor and the gate, but even if you turn all that off, it's still got a, a nice sound to it. It warms it up somewhat. But, of course, because it's got the gate and the compressor and stuff, I'd also use that if I want to use it. But... Um, it's just a great plugin. I'm really a big fan of that. I tried using a um, bit of a tangent here. 
I tried using the um, CLA Mix Hub a little bit more, um, which is the <clears throat> the plugin that um, where you can have like build your own mixing desk with with all your different channel strips. You can have up to sixty four instances of the plugin all running in these things called buckets. And it was really nice to use, but I must say it totally crucified the processing power of the computer. I mean, it was it was awful. This computer that I'm using here is not slow by any means. I mean, we're talking eight core with 16, you know, virtual cores um, running at like 3.8 gigahertz with 32 gigs of RAM. This is a pretty decent computer. And then um, it's all the latest wave stuff, so it's not like I'm using old software or something sort of dodgy. But it, it just literally was was eyed it up to the maximum latency, and it it, um, it was just crashing when I maybe got to about ten tracks of drums with it. I've used the Mix Hub before to do things where I just run it on individual channels, but when I um, uh, but when I uh, yeah when I put it all in the buckets and used it like that, it all went. Um, it all went crazy and just wasn't happening at all. So I think to just use it as an individual plug-in over a channel, is a, it, it sounds fantastic, but to use it for your whole kit and your guitars and everything, I think is absolutely uh, absolutely crazy. What was that Paul was saying? Uh, also, the third kick needs lining up. Yes, I mean, I, I will go through and manually line up all the, uh, all the kicks and make sure they're absolutely spot on to the original. Um, and usually I'm just doing that by eye <laughs> and looking through. You said the third one needs lining up. Looks pretty bang on to me, maybe a touch back. Yeah, bring it back to there. But I will go through and check them all one by one but I'm not going to do that this second. And also that might be really boring for the stream. So um, I might do it all by not doing that. And then, um, well, the snare's not triggered. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not uh, I, I, will, I can go through and do some quantization on the drums if I need to. Yeah, yeah, the snare's bang on the beat and the bass drum's a tiny bit late, so I could move that. But um, I'm not going to concentrate too much of that on this stream. If after the, it's done, I'm feeling that there's bits that need tightening up, I'll, I'll do that because that's really, really monotonous to watch. Um, so here we go. Right. Um, but sometimes, you know, if it, does, if it sounds all right, then, then leave it. And that was the way it was played. So... Anyway, so I'm not going to do the bucket thing. That's why I went off on one about that. Um, I'm going to just use... The, I might use the Mix Hub plugin, but I'm not going to do it all in the buckets because I think it's just going to kill my computer. hear the whistle on that there's a really harsh whistle coming through around 900 and, it 950 odd hertz Another one. Yeah, there's a lot of um, 
A lot of whistles going on on this. I mean, I don't know the room. I don't know who recorded it or what mics they use or whatever, but I'm getting a few whistles and it, it, it could well be the room. It could also be the, the mics. I, I really... I really don't know. I mean, sometimes mics have a certain resonant frequency as well, or a couple of resonant frequencies, particularly if they're not like the most expensive mics in the world. We can tune them out. But I'm probably going to try and use the rooms to get most of it, because we uh, lined the rooms with the in-phase plug-in last time, and, and, and I thought they sounded a bit better. So I might just really use just the very top end out of the, uh, out of the overheads. There's not a lot going on under here anyway. See how it sounds uh, with the other bits. Let's have a listen to the rooms. I'm going to get myself uh, familiar with the signals a bit more. Hmm. Right, what did I cut last time? I mean, they're nice and trashy. I haven't done any of that compression. That's entirely coming from the um, from the original signals. Um, so yeah, after listening to them, I probably do want to keep some more bottom end in the overheads because I'm missing the clarity from these mics here. But. <laughs> one that I'm going to cut around there and boost something a little bit higher up just to compensate for the lack so take out the four but maybe boost the eight a little bit Interesting, interesting. Um, just listen to where we're at with the uh, entire drums at the moment. So that's just with the overheads. got the SSL compressor on it but it's not doing very much at the moment and an EQ across the room and the overheads but they're not doing a lot at the moment
Right, let's have a listen through to the uh, toms. Just the toms. So that's nice. Someone's trimmed them all up, so there's uh, there's no background noise in between them. So um, that's fantastic. Saves me having to do it. Um, I'm going to just loop a bit where there's some toms. Uh, here we go. We've got both of them there. Two for the price of one, eh? Okay, so have I linked these channels? If I haven't linked these channels, I'm going to for a second. Because the thing is with these uh, with these toms is it's a stereo pair. I got given a, a file that was basically just sort of like left and right toms. So they've already kind of been panned and already mixed together. So I'm getting a little bit of the first tom on the second tom channel and a little bit of the second tom on the first tom channel and, you know. Um, <clears throat> So I'm going to treat them for the moment, I'm going to treat them as a tom group and then see if I need to tweak something out the first tom more than the second tom, then I'll do it more on um, the left channel than the right. But um, I'll load up an EQ and you see if I load up an EQ on one, it's going to copy the settings of the other. That's That's a great function when you link the channels you can do it so it copies the the settings so as you change one EQ it changes the other um, which is why I link them so let's play those toms I'm going to listen through I always describe the, the sort of tom sound that I like, I describe as papery. I don't know if anyone gets what I mean by that, but um, I don't want it to sound slappy. You don't want to hear it when the, you know, like this kind of this click when the stick hits the skin. But I, I still want it to have some, some brightness to it. Um, and I always describe it in my head as papery. I don't know whether anyone else gets what that means. Um, might just be an association in my head that means nothing to anyone else. But if you listen to a good example would be if you listen to um, someone like Ian Pace. Ian Pace has really papery sounding toms to me. <laughs> it's a, not a great way of describing it, but. That's what it is now. This is what it was. I'm just going to push the level a bit because I've taken some stuff out. Okay, so let's have a listen to them in context. Hmm. Oh, Sean's appeared. Hello, Sean. How are you doing, mate? Okay, yeah, they're sounding more like I want them to sound now. I'm hearing that dynamic without the, the woo at the bottom end coming through. Um, but I probably want to turn them up a bit or turn some other things down. I shouldn't start just turning everything up. So I lose the room. Okay, so where's what headroom have I got in those toms to? 
possibly turn them up a little bit. Nothing. <laughs> I can't turn them up on the EQ and I can't turn them up on there, so I'm going to turn my other things down. The kick is meaty, yes it most certainly is. see what's going on here yep that's all lined up of course it does a tempo change that's why right so now now I've kind of got the toms and the bass drum and snare drum somewhere close I mean I'm going to keep tweaking this all the way through so I don't expect them to be perfect at the moment but I'm going to have a tweak with the overheads while I'm listening to the other stuff because you can EQ stuff on its own but um Doing it with the other instruments in will definitely um, definitely be better. It'll give it a more realistic um, overview of what it's going to sound like. that out or whether I just want to put a, uh, a low pass just over some of the top end of that. That's what it was. I listen to all those whistles come back. The moment I turn that EQ off, there's all these frequencies that just go to me. It's, I don't know how well that comes across on the Facebook stream, but... Yeah, come on, Sean, you must have known that. Put some headphones on at least, mate. Come on. You can't uh can't be listening on a phone. <laughs> do you think I watch your computer file videos on a phone? Well actually I do, but I should uh say me and Sean did a, a real fun experiment the other day. Um he sent me a picture of a WAV file. If you haven't seen my uh, YouTube video about it, it was it was um, great fun. In fact, I'm just going to have a diversion for two seconds to show you this, just in case you didn't see it. Don't worry, I'm not going to go through all the code again. But, um, yeah, I uh, he sent me... Hang on, I'll find it here. Here we go. So he sent me this picture here of a WAV file of him saying computer file, which is the YouTube channel that he uh, runs. 
and um, I wrote a computer program to extract that uh, the sound from that picture. And it ended up um, sounding like this, if I open it in Audacity. Whenever I go off on a tangent, I realise I haven't got a clue what I'm doing and I regret it. But the next time I do something, I um, I then go back to uh, doing random things. So here we go. Computer file. Computer file. So him saying computer file there, which is very grainy, was actually extracted by a bit of uh, software I wrote um, from this picture, which I thought was pretty cool. Anyway, he's on the stream, so I just thought I'd plug doing that. Um, <clears throat> Because I really enjoyed it, and why not? Anyway, where was I? Yeah, that's sounding nice now, and the toms seem quite in proportion. I brought the bass drum and the snare drum back a bit, but then I pushed them again. Yeah, it does sound like it. Well, it is him, I suppose. Right, let's have a listen to this hi-hat, because the hi-hat's quite prominent in this, and a lot of the times I don't use a hi-hat mic. Um, okay, so there's a lot of men coming through on that. I don't want any of that, so let's go for a high pass. Be nice if the hi-hat was playing. pass as well. Yeah, I'm trying to get some splashiness out of it. And I might put a yeah. I love this compressor. It sounds really, really it's just, just got this kind of transparency to it that's um, it's very beautiful. It sounds like um, I had, I didn't have this compressor in real analog um, form, but I had a, a drama compressor uh, that I cannot remember the model number of, but this plugin really reminds me of that drama compressor and that literally just had two knobs on it. There was a compressed knob and a gain knob and that was it and it sounded awesome, particularly on vocals. Um, <clears throat> and this really reminds me of that. Having never owned a real uh, LA-2A compressor, I can't tell you whether it actually sounds like um, an LA-2A compressor. Right, so I've got a ride mic here, and I don't think I've ever bothered recording a ride mic for anything. Um, because most of the stuff I do, the ride comes through too much on everything anyway. But he's doing some very specific things with this, so... Um, I'm going to kind of treat it a bit like the hi-hat. Just take the top end. Oh, of course. Stops playing the ride the moment I want him to. Typical drummer. Inoffensive, I'm not hearing anything that's annoying me frequency wise in that. Um, 
to the whole drum sound if I have it in and have it out. Um, let me check it's going to the right channel. It's not. I need to send this to the ambient group. To me, that's just not adding anything, so I'm just going to mute it for now. Sorry, what'd you miss? Oh, Sean, I played your uh, your computer file voice thing with the picture. That was all you missed. Um, oh, yeah, you've got a new video up about da with Dave featuring Dave um, Browsford. I will watch that later, mate. That sounds amazing. If any of you uh, want some entertainment after this, obviously don't leave this stream, but once this stream's finished, go to Computer File and watch some Dave Brailsford videos. He's, he's just brilliant. He just talks with such authority. Right. All drums. I'm loving the sound of that. That's all good for me at the moment. Um, the ambient and the close drums are... I'm going to turn the uh, uh, close ones... What am I... How am I sending these? Right, I'm doing these all pre-fader. Um, right, so let's just have a listen. I'm going to pull out the close drums and the ambience, and I'm just going to listen to my trash drums group. So for those who've never watched me doing some mixing before on these streams, which might be some of you. Um, I send all the close drums, like the you know, bass drum, snare drum, toms, whatever, to a group, and then I send all the ambient stuff to a different group, and then I send them via a send to a trash drums group, which is what you're going to hear now. Um, so this is my trash drums group, and the idea of the trash drums group is that it's basically almost distorted. I don't want it to distort, but I want to compress it so much that it sounds like it's trashed and it's distorted, but not too distorted. And then I want to feed it in underneath the clean drums. And what ends up happening is you've got the clean drums that are really, really dynamic and punchy. Um, but then there's this kind of quiet bits between the drums and then it will fill in with this, this, trashy sound and you'll you'll hear what I mean in a minute but I want to get the right the right type of trash so I remember in the last video when I was setting this up I had the um, CLA 76 the 1176 uh, clone plug-in um, and I quite liked what it was doing with the release it was giving it this tss, 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 tss sort of sound to it My worry is with this style of music that it's going to take out some of the tightness of it. And part of the charm of, of, of this track is, you know, it's, it's, there's bass drums and snare drums happening at the same time. So you're already going to lose some of the punch because you've got two punchy instruments both happening at the same time. Um, so I think that's just going to be a bit too harsh for this. Um, and the Maserati as well, which is another one that I really like, which is actually like a mastering compressor, but it has a, a, a drum bus feature. And if you turn the sensitivity right up, that again really trashes the uh, crap out of it. 
but I'm not going to do that. I think I'm going to go for my nice transparent CLA 2A. Um, I've done some high passing. Because I don't want to be trashing the real bottom end frequencies. They'll just sound horrible. Um, so this one again. And then I'm just going to turn the peak reduction right up. Oh, yeah. Now, you notice the way this compared to the other one, even though I've got the peak reduction right up and it sounds really trashy, it still sounds clean. Even though I've just whacked it full up way more than you'd ever do if you wanted to just sort of listen to the drums on their own. So now I'm going to pull the trash drums out. I'm going to put the uh, close drums and the ambience back in. I think the close drums are just pulled down a touch. And then we'll turn up the trash drums underneath those uh, clean drums. <laughs> So I've got a Maserati as well, an HEQ. Oh, this was stuff I set up before. Yes. Okay, I'm just going to turn these off for a minute. In fact, I'm going to get rid of them all together because I don't want to use those effects on this. They won't do very much, but they will colour the sound a little. Right, so I need to go to my mixing desk here <coughs> and turn down the level because now all of that stuff is being sent to this all drums group. Um, I don't want it to peak. Still not enough headroom even, even though I've taken 5 dB off it. I'll take it down to minus nine not for any reason other than the fact that it was a nice convenient mouse move but it's just pulled some of the level off the all the drums feeding into that room CLA mix down plugin is going absolutely mental. Come on, waves, you're not going to be giving me software that sounds uh, that looks like that. So all I'm going to do here is I'm just going to use the SSL compressor, not the whole channel strip, just... Uh I'm going to turn the attack time up to 10 milliseconds because I really don't want to get... Um, I don't want to lose any of the punch of the bass drum and the snare drum. I just want to have it tickling it. No, no significant gain reduction. Like that, just tickle.
that's cool. Nothing's peaking. That's sounding pretty nice to me, to be honest. Let's move on to the bass guitar. Sounds nice. Um, okay, I'm going to uh, double the track. Now there's two ways of doing this. Um, usually I just uh, duplicate the track and then I um, make the uh, make a channel where it's basically the sub and then make a channel that's the kind of the mid and the top. Um, which is absolutely fine when you're mixing, and that's kind of what I would usually do in a situation like this. But I was doing some recording the other day where I was recording the bass. Um, I was playing bass on some ideas that I was having. <clears throat> and I wanted to monitor it like that, and I realised I wasn't going to record on two different channels. Um, and uh, so I thought I'd show you the other way that I would set it up, which would basically to be to make a... Um, here it is. Yeah, so basically it will be to make two groups, uh, one stereo and one mono. I'm going to put it by the bass. There we go. Um, so that's a stereo group, and then I'm going to make a mono group as well, which I'll call bass sub. Um and then I'm going to send it to these two groups. That way, if we were actually in a recording situation where you were sitting next to me and playing the bass, we'd actually be monitoring the bass through the, through the groups, which um, is kind of nice when you're working with a band. Um, because people like to play and play to something where they're getting the sound of a kind of a semi-mixed song. So... But usually, in just a mix situation, I just duplicate the track. Um, but this time around, I'll show you something different because I've done that in other videos. Uh, groups, right? Bass high, bass sub. Turn them both on. Turn the fader down. So we're going to get nothing off this at all. <laughs> Basically, I've got two channels of exactly the same thing. But the bass sub is a mono group and the bass high is a stereo group because I'm going to put uh, an amp simulator over it, which will be a stereo plug-in, which is why I've made that group in stereo. Um, so I'm going to just use a Q2. I don't need a full Q10 to do what I want to do on this. Um, so make sure that the high is off. And we're just listening to the sub channel. And I'm going to put both of those in and make it uh, high and low pass. And I'll dial this one up to about 60 odd hertz and have this about sort of 80 something hertz. And we'll. Now it's tempting to want to hear a real low bottom end. Because um, it kind of sounds nice, particularly if you've got big speakers, which I've got some really sort of nice speakers here. I've got a couple of sets of speakers. And um, when I'm mixing most of the time, I have the bigger ones on. And um, you really feel the bottom end, and it's beautiful. But then you put it in the track, and it just can sound really muddy. So I... I like to, in the in the frequency spectrum of things, I like to have the bass guitar sort of sitting above the bass drum. So if the bass drum's pushing through at like 40 and 50 hertz with a bit of a kick, then, um, uh, then I can put the bass a little bit higher up, sort of maybe starting 60 or 70 hertz. Um, and it allows them both to have room to breathe. Now that was the problem, part of the reason... Um, why I wanted to trigger the bass drum because the bass drum didn't, the original bass drum signal didn't have that kind of 50 hertz, 40, 50 hertz punch at the bottom end. 
And then I'd be using the bass guitar to fill that in, which you can do, but you know, it's, it, we have the technology to make it sound as good as possible, so why not? Yeah, I think about 70 hertz is not bringing the rumble in and now bring the top down. Because even though they're kind of, this is 70, this is 76, that's sounding quite nice. Um, obviously, there's a curve on it, so it's not like it's just a dead cut. Um, right, so now I'm going to put a uh, SSL. Oh, I see. It hasn't got a space in SL. SSL comp is one uh, one word. Again, because it's sub, same as the bass drum and stuff, I want to turn the attack up a bit. I'm going to have uh, 10 milliseconds of attack on that because I still want to hear the punch of the bass, but I'll tighten up the other channel. pushing the gain up a bit there because stripping all those frequencies out means it's quite a low level. Um, right, let's have a listen to the high. I'm going to go for the bass high now. So I'm just going to use a, uh, a Q2 again in stereo this time because this is a stereo group. Um, I just want to get that. It's going to be fun when that jumps out. I'm getting flat at the moment. So this is Amplitube, if you've not seen this before. This is wonderful software of all the guitar amp simulators i've ever used this is the most realistic i want to up the level coming out of this eq so right that's a little bit too distorted sounding there so i'm going to load up a um I want to get something like a Fender Twin. I love using guitar amps on the top of bass signals. Um, just the standard Fender Twin, Twin Reverb. Classic clean twin. <laughs> Now that sounds quite skanky at the moment, but it won't when the sub's in. That will uh, that will sit really nicely. I'm going to put another EQ over the top of it. So um, now we've kind of processed it through the amp simulator. I'm going to find some horrible frequencies and take them out. Compressor. 
over it, particularly if he's going to do stuff like that. <laughs> SSL comp. Subbing with it. So that's where we've got to with the bass sound. So if I turn these off and I put that in, this is what we had. I'll do a quick change. Quick as I can. So let's listen to that with the drums and get some sort of a drums and bass level together. Phasing of the uh, bass channels. sounds better when the uh, phase is reversed. I think there's just a few frequencies that were cancelling each other out. Um, obviously something within the EQing and the, the amp simulation is swapping the phase somewhere. At some point, I'm going to put some reverbs on things, but I'm going to really resist doing that for the moment. Um, it's very tempting to just cover things in reverb, and then when other instruments come in, it will uh, really mess it up. Right, so I'm going to start as I mean to go on here. I'm going to create a, uh, a new stereo group, which I'm going to call All Music, which is basically everything other than the drums. Um, not that the drums aren't music, they are, but I like to have... Um, this thing is in the way. I'm just going to press Z, makes it all small. Bring it up there. So after all the drums here, I'm going to have a group called All Music. And basically... I'm going to send everything that isn't the drums to that, and then that way if everything starts getting loud and the drums get lost, I can just pull all the music out very, very quickly. And, um, and, and usually by the end of a mix, by the time I'm getting stuff in, I'm bringing this down anything between 3 to 5 dB. Because um, otherwise I'm then having to go through and remix all of this and bring all of them down or turn the drums up, which I don't want to do because then you start pushing things louder than everything else. Um, 
And this is just something I used to do when I worked on analog desks. Um, so I'm just doing the same as I've always done, really. Seems to work. Um, music, all music, here we go. So at the moment I'm just leaving this at 0 dB, I'm not turning it down at all. Um, <clears throat> let's have a listen through to some guitars. So I've got a stereo pair of clean and a stereo pair of distorted guitars. <laughs> Immediately, I don't know who else can um, can hear, um, but immediately I'm hearing some real low end stuff going on there, which doesn't actually sound bad on its own. But I know in the mix that's just going to really create so much muddiness at the bottom end. So I'm going to link these channels. I'm going to start by linking them. Um, in fact, no, I'm going to group them. I'm going to treat them as a, as a stereo channel. So I'm going to create two groups um, because we've got distorted guitar as well. Bring them up above there. Move this one down there. And then we'll have a group of clean guitars. and a group of distorted guitars. And at the moment, I'm just dealing with the clean. So I'm going to send these to the clean guitar group. <laughs> so if I boost it, you'll hear what I'm hearing at the bottom end. If you... Um, haven't got speakers that go as low. It's all that stuff. Which is kind of around 40 hertz. I can hear the hand on the on the strings and the, the vibration of the guitar and stuff. Which sounds nice. If that guitar's on its own, I'd like that because it gives it a real warm feeling at the bottom end, but that's just going to interfere with the bass drum. So it's uh Getting high past. Goodbye, low frequencies. That's much better. something hurts always on a guitar it's 300 odd hertz and usually there's something around 700 as well maybe sort of between six and eight but seven is the usual Fifty. A nice whistle there.
So this is what we've got now, and this is what we started with. That's what it was. And now... Okay. A um, little bit of... Um, little bit of the SSL, I think. Just again, tickling it, not too much. Yes, adding some bite to it, that's nice. Right, so I need to send those clean guitars to the All Music Group. And, uh, yeah, let's just go mute everything else for the moment because um, I don't want to have to keep soloing everything. It's going to become hard. It'll become harder and harder to um, go through and solo everything. Where it'll be a lot easier to just have all the stuff that I haven't worked on yet muted. <laughs> For anyone who hasn't seen me do that before, sometimes I get a, uh, a single frequency like, um, like this, turn it up quite a bit, and then I widen the cue so the curve is really, really wide. Um, I wouldn't have it up that loud, but uh, just a little bit of a boost. And then I kind of sweep backwards and forwards so it kind of uh, tips, the, tips the EQ. And because we've taken out nasty bits... Um, you can kind of get away with doing this a bit and, and sometimes you can just kind of tip it and just brighten it all up a touch or or make it a little bit um, warmer um, and I think with this it's just brightening up in the right way you know not so it's just a single frequency or a little kind of peak at the top end it's more of a um, on on the old uh, amps, on the, some old sort of Marshall amps and stuff, I think they called it um, contour or colour or, or orange amps might call it colour, I don't know, but um, it's that kind of thing anyway. <laughs> Trev. And now I've done that, it's it's got a lot more um, attack to it, which is lovely, but that means I need to turn up the attack time on the compressor because the compressor was just pulling it back too much. And I might um, high pass it a little bit more, I might bring up that frequency. Hello Joe. Now we've got to the point where it's kind of sounding punchy and it doesn't need to be loud. Um, I'm a guitarist, as you probably know, and uh, I'm not a big fan of having hugely loud guitars. You don't need loud guitars in the mix. If you EQ them right and you get the right frequencies to stand out and you take out the horrible bits, you can have them not that loud and they still cut through as if they're loud. I mean, perfect example would be, listen to the police, okay? the vocals and the guitar in police songs were 
the kind of the quietest things in the mix and the drums and the bass were the loudest things yet you don't listen to walking on the moon and think oh let's turn the guitar up you know it's, it's cuts through perfectly it's absolutely gorgeous and um yeah so i would play a bit but for copyright reasons i can't stick other people's songs that um, i haven't got rights to in the stream so Otherwise, I'd be referencing stuff like that and checking I'm not going too far the other way. Because sometimes you can have a memory of something being quiet in a mix and then you turn it down to be quiet and then you go too far. So referencing is always a good thing, which is something I can't do on these streams, unfortunately. <laughs> The only thing that's lacking for me in that guitar now is the feeling that it's actually in a place. Um, it's it doesn't feel like it's um, it's sitting in a in a three dimensional space, and that's something that when I'm mixing, I like to think about where things will be in a three dimensional sense, not just left and right. Uh, the guitar sounds too much like it's there. Um, and I could use, um, I could do all sorts of things with it, but I think I'm going to go for an old favourite, which is a completely free plugin called the Room Machine. Now, this is available on a website. Um, I can't remember which one, but if you search for the Room Machine 844, and if you use a PC, um, this is available as free. And I love this thing. This just sounds just so much like you're putting something in a room, in a real room. So I'll just turn the wet up. I mean, there's already a touch of reverb on the guitar from when it was recorded, but this just makes it, oh, it just sounds like it's in a real space now, and you listen to that. Because what I'm looking for is the sound, almost like the, the, the guitar is bleeding onto the drum mics. Obviously, I don't want the guitar to bleed onto the drum mics, and they're not, because it's all isolated, which is great. But I want it to sound like it is. <laughs> um, so I want the ultimate control of not having it on, a, on the drum mics, with the joy of pretending it is there. That's called having your cake and eating it, I think. Never understood that expression. Why would you want to have a cake and not eat it? The whole point of having a cake is to eat it. That makes no sense whatsoever. So yeah, I'm going to have my cake and I'm going to eat it. <laughs> Sounds great to me. Really like that. That's uh, been a whole world of difference. Let's listen to the difference there. That's what it was. That's what it is. That's what it was. Okay, right, 
let's move on to the uh, distorted guitar, which I don't think is that distorted, actually. Um, well, it's certainly not like a metal song. Is there a wrong note in that? Let me see what the bass is doing. semitone flat or something if you played guitar on this and you're watching the stream let me know whether that was intentional whether it was a mistake and whether I should try and fix it or not I don't want to be fixing things that people like and uh, if it is a if it isn't a mistake and um, I'm maligning you I apologize in advance <laughs> Definitely sounds wrong to me. Right. Let's do some fixing. Fixy, fixy, fixy. Mm -hmm. Right, so are these both, these are different signals, aren't they? Are these actually different signals or is it a stereo guitar sound? I think it's two different signals, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe not. I don't know because there's kind of a slapback delay, so it could be um, it could be two different signals, or I could be uh, fooled into thinking it is. Anyway, they're both making playing the same note. Let's chop this out. Move it up by semitone. There's loads of ways of pitch changing. I could put it into Vary Audio, which is like the sort of the auto tune -y type thing. Um, but I just tried the simplest method first, which is just chop the note out and uh, knock it up a semitone on the transpose. Which seems to work nicely. And that one there as well. But he worries me, he's playing it the same every time, so I could be really screwing up their song at the moment, and uh, they could be sitting at home watching this going, what's he doing? Give me some feedback, please. <laughs> By the way, I make no judgment if it's a mistake, because I went through several mixes before where I'm playing on stuff, and trust me, there's loads of stuff that's covered in mistakes that I've recorded. Um, and there's one song that um, I'm going to go through of mine. Um, and I found this whole middle eight bit where I'm kind of doing like C sharp minor to C to B to A. And when, I, when I'm playing the B chord, I'm just the open A strings just ringing. It just sounds really, really horrible. But in the mix obviously I didn't notice at the time I mean I was younger then so I make no judgment anyway that's my point is that we all make loads of little fluffs and they don't really come through but if I can find them and fix them then great I do that all the time with my own guitars 
time so it's either a consistent mistake or I'm getting this very wrong still we're in lockdown they're not going to come and knock at my door so that's all that I care about <laughs> That one's very solid. Oh no, there's right. I'm gonna find out where these guitars are stereo on mine. So that's got a Yeah, they are the same guitar, I'm sure. Yeah, it does need to be done. I won't let that one go. I was going to and then I decided against it. I changed my mind. Oh, what was that? Hmm. That clearly does not sound nice. Yeah, it's because there's some overtones or something. Right, so I'm going to nick that bit from another version of it. There's one there, as if by magic. <clears throat> I 
to be that long. Yeah. Well, hopefully um, I'm not going to be shouted at for fixing something that wasn't actually a mistake, but... Um, I think that sounds better. Um, so let's do some EQ on that. Right, remember what I said earlier, usually around 300 and something. It's going to sound horrible. Yep, three twenty. And then between seven and nine hundred hertz. Last time it was uh seven fifty, wasn't it? Or six and eight hundred hertz. Sorry. <laughs> Just uh, tip the EQ a bit and bring it more up towards the top. Just give it some bite. SSL compressor.
that guitar was definitely a mistake because the guitar was a semitone lower than the saxes. So I'm assuming that the uh, the saxes are going to be right. Okay, <clears throat> onwards, organ. It's an iterative process. I'm not going to make everything perfect straight away. Once everything's in, I'll then go back and change stuff and we'll keep going until we get it right. Uh, I've got a feeling I've got to do a lot of stuff with the organ. <laughs> I like it. I like it. And the part's beautifully played. I, I think it's got a lot of life to it. Um, I just want to hear it through. I'd like to hear it through a real Leslie, but um, I don't have a real Leslie here. Not a 147 or anything like that. Oh, that would be nice. Um, excuse me, yawning there. Um, so I'm going to make a group for it just so I can process it in stereo. And I'm going to see what would happen if I run it through a Leslie simulator. And if yeah, that sounds too much, I might... Oh, I didn't want to move stereo out. What am I doing? Um, yeah, if that sounds too much, then... Um, then I will just do kind of what I do with the drums. I might run it through it and then just mix a little bit of that underneath the original signal. But let's start by just putting a, a Leslie simulator across the whole thing and having a play about. <laughs> I haven't actually sent them to the Leslie group. <laughs> I made the group but didn't send them. What an idiot. Uh, one, it was a one four seven. <laughs> just sounds instantly better. It's like, oh, I feel like I'm in a room with a Hammond there. Right, it's going to need to be Q now. I don't have to keep starting again from the beginning. Thank you. 
I don't want them to interfere with each other. Yeah, we've just lost our first DB off the All Music group as things are starting to get turned up. I was losing the, the punch of the drums, so the music's starting to come down. I really like that organ sound. I think that's sounding really nice. Let's um, do a bit of piano. Um... <laughs> It's kind of weird reverb going on on that, but. <clears throat> I think whoever's kind of given them the files for this, whoever recorded it, has um, managed to accidentally bounce some reverb from the snare onto the piano tracks. <laughs> Uh, kind of annoying, but never mind. I don't think in the grand scheme of things you're going to hear it under the mix. Okay, piano, here we go. Piano, piano, piano.
taking a lot of top end off that. I'm wondering um, whether that's too much in the mix, but we'll have a listen. <laughs> There's this kind of thing that hangs on over the end, which I think is some kind of reverb. Sounds like there's a thunderstorm going on behind it. So all of that's going to go. What's that little, sounds like a breath, even though it's a piano. Right, I think what I want to do with those is I want to push them quite wide. Um, because the guitars and the organ and stuff, I mean the organ's got some stereo in it, but I want to make that piano much wider and much further back so it's not taking up the same sort of space where I'm going to end up putting the vocals and other things later on. So I'm just going to get the right hand channel here and I'm just going to delay it by 20 milliseconds. Let's start at 20 and see. So that means basically what's happening in the right speaker is now 20 minutes, sorry, 20 minutes, 20 minutes, <laughs> that would be very bad, uh, 20 milliseconds later than, um, than what's happening on the right. So it sounds like it's further away. a warmth that's missing from it. <clears throat> I know I've pulled, pulled a lot of bottom end out. So if I pull that out and then I put in something lower down, maybe on a shelf, that might... Um, I'm 
if I'm pulling out one of the other frequencies too much. Um. The sound is so compressed. The sound is so compressed that putting more compression on it could possibly just make the whole thing sound worse. But it's the type of compression that just sounds a bit cheap, and and I want it to um, I want it to have the warmth. So. I'll try a couple of things. Again, hardly tickling it, but it just makes such a difference to the sound. Oh, beautiful. I'm not going to spend um, all day thinking about that piano. Um, that's the first thing I've come across where I thought I just really want a different signal. I just haven't got the got what I'm looking for in the signal. But that's life when you're mixing. You just sometimes don't, you know, always have what you want, as someone once said. Um, Right, let's have a listen to these saxes. So again, all the saxes are mixed to a stereo pair, so they're more like a stem than a full multi-track. Um, I'm going to take a group. I've created a group called Sax. <coughs> Send each of those to there. So there's some reverb already on those, so I'm not going to um, do too much with that, but I do want a, an EQ to take off unnecessary rumble. <laughs> around that 700 mark between 7 800 it's, it makes it sound more like a duck and you don't want 
anything like that to sound like a duck. <laughs> sending the um, stuff to all the groups um, the all music group <coughs> so that means I've got to raise all these by one dB to compensate not that they're in an exact place at the moment I'll just do it roughly um, all music send the sax to all music as well so what I'm looking for on there is not a reverb, some kind of slapback delay. Um, I'm going to try the H delay. Get it really, really tight with a ping pong and a low feedback. Bring the top and bottom off the off the. I'm trying to trim up the beginning of these drums while I'm listening through. And I keep clicking stupidly. I think the organ's nice where it is, but when it does that last little bit where it's going sus four to, you know, off again, it just sounds beautiful. Let's <laughs> just love that. So I'm probably going to go through and do some automating, automating, bring out certain little bits of like the organ, little bits on the guitar as well. Um, yeah, this is sounding really fun now. Right, I did some work on the uh, lead vocal before, I vaguely remember. What did I do? I put in an EQ. Oh, yeah, I remember. I found some resonant frequencies on the mics. It all seems to be around 700 and something. I'm wondering whether they use the same mic for vocals that they use for guitar and 
other bits and pieces because because I'm getting that same ring on all of it. So um, yeah, maybe maybe it's the microphone. So I did that, and then I whacked on the uh, the seventy six. Um, I probably put it in the bluey mode for a vocal. All right, I'll unmute the vocal group. Another Wednesday afternoon, the same old empty bar. Right, I put loads of stuff on last time, so I'm going to turn all that off. Another Wednesday afternoon, the same old empty bar. Do you have another drink? I put a fiver in the car. Cancelled taxis going out today. Spend all my money to the next bit, dear. But for now, we don't know what to do. Spend all my money in a day or two. Yeah, that sounds great. So I did that last time. I went through and I EQ'd the vocal. And I notched out some stuff um, in these places here, so just below 250 and then um, 700 odd hertz. And three and a bit K, and I think I did the same on the backing vocals then. I copied the same settings across I did, right. So that's good, saves me having to do it now. <clears throat> but I just changed this um, compressor to the bluey revision, which sounds beautiful. Another Wednesday afternoon, the same old empty bar. Do you have another drink? I put a fiver in the car. So, right, what did I have on it when I was messing around the other day? I put some delay on it. Pretty similar to the sax, but with um, more feedback, which makes sense. And then a reverb, uh, of course. Yeah, I went straight for the plate reverb. Loads of pre-delay. That sounds great. Pre-delay sounds great. Um, and then an L2 just to limit the whole thing. So let's turn all those back on and see what it sounds like. Wednesday afternoon. Another Wednesday afternoon. Right, the moment I introduce all that, we're getting all this low end now. So I'm going to put in the group of vocals. Or in the stereo send stereo group sorry I'm uh, yeah gonna do a high pass on that as well another Wednesday afternoon the same old empty bar do you have another drink I put a fiver in the car cancel taxis going out today spend all my money to the next big day but Over that um, compressor, 
and 76. Cancel Texas going out today. Spend all my money to the next big day. But for now, we don't know what to do. Spend all my money in a day or two. Texas going out today Spend all my money to the next big day But for now we don't know what to do Spend all my money in a day or two Up for work at half past five in bed at ten spread those bits because they're not the same kind of backing vocals of that. I could move them to some new tracks, but I'm going to try something very quickly. I'm just going to grab the right hand one and instead of delaying it on the track, I'm just going to shift the start of it a little bit. So they're now a little bit more ragged sounding. So the right will be slightly later than the left. Um, be good if I actually soloed them. That's cool. See, um, now they're, they're just, again, really wide and allowing the other instruments that are in the centre uh, to, to kind of come through. Um, that sounds... <laughs> Okay, right, this uh, last sound that came in was an alarm. Just to do it all again. <laughs> Which is kind of cool, but um, very mono. And doesn't sound like it's in a space. So I'm actually going to add a new track. I'm going to add a stereo track that I'm going to call Alarm ST for Alarm Stereo. I'm going to copy that to there. Get rid of that one for now. Um, because I want that in a stereo track, so I'm put some stereo effects on it. Um, it cuts off very abruptly, um, but I'm just going to put um, that room machine over it. Give it a, a real space. That 
is literally the most anxiety inducing thing in the world listening to alarms go off oh I feel like I'm at school so do it all again right let me um a little bit of EQ on it um take out some I'm going to guess and say it's probably about 300 isn't it And um, wouldn't be right if I didn't uh, high pass it. Because if it was recorded at a distance, you wouldn't have that much uh, bottom end on it. Do it all again. But I like the idea of that kind of coming in more on one side than the other. Um, so do it all again. Cancel tech. Yeah, and then it then it's not so boring and just in the middle. I'm going to turn the room up a bit more on this. Right, that can come up quite significantly in the mix now. Yeah, it can still be a little bit wetter. Backing vocals, I want to treat them differently, so I'm going to cut them out. Well, they're already cut out. I want to um, copy them down to some brand new tracks down here. Come on. No, I don't want to do that. Will I? So there we go. And that should have copied over all the uh, settings, which it has. That's nice. So I'll bring them back to here. Na na left and na na right. Somehow managed to do a couple of extra characters on the end of that. So I don't want these linked with the backing vocals, so I'm going to um, unlink selected channels. So I'm going to relink the backing vocals. Just bring it across this, you can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to then link the na na nas together separately. little bit more bottom end on them so they sound a little bit less polished
Oh, there's a load of things that I really want to do to this now. I need to have an ear break for it. I've been going for about two and a half hours, and I'm worried I'm starting to push treble and stuff. I noticed that in one of the last um, streams I did. I just started to push too much treble towards the end of the session. Um, and it's, it's. I've always known that, obviously, you do that as your ears get tired, and you can do that. Um, but it was interesting to actually watch back and see it happening, and I was quite horrified by some of it. Um <clears throat> But yeah, there's some things that I really want to do that I should speak to them about. Because um, to me, the transitioning between the sections of the song, um, there's not as much um, change. Now, what what I'd usually do is, on the output, is I'd just automate the level. So when it goes from verse to chorus, it just goes up by another dB and just pushes in. But where the, um, where the chorus uh, comes in... Um, I just want to hear something like some sort of reverse symbol or something or some kind of like swilling symbol. So it's like, shh, and it just kind of adds a little bit of a here I am at those moments. Working just to stay afloat, go out and find a way. A job so you can't pay the rent, there must be more than life. Cancel Texas going out. And then a, another level boost, so the verses will be a bit down, and then then it kind of goes up for that bit. So um, that's something to think about. But right now, I'm going to have a, an ear break from it. I'm going to play the whole thing all the way through because I don't want you have sat here if you've stayed with me for the whole stream, and then um, and then you don't get to listen to the song. That'd be a bit horrible. So I'm going to mute my mic, and um, I'm going to go and listen in the kitchen just to get a different perspective. And, uh, yeah, have a listen through to the whole thing. And I'm going to have an ear break from it. And I'll either come back later or tomorrow or something and finish it once I've spoken to a couple of guys in the band and see what freedom I've got to start adding things and messing about with it like that. So um, Mike's being muted. And uh, here we go.
Well, I think that's sounding um, pretty nice at the moment. Um, there's a lot of little bits that I want to do automating wise. There's things I hear that I want to bring that out at that moment and then bring it back again. Um, as I said, there's a couple of things I want to add um, to the sound sort of production y things. And um, <clears throat> yeah, and I want to do some uh, automation on the final output so that it's got a little bit more dynamics from section to section. But um, yeah, I think for now that is enough. Um, for the moment, I will probably come back and revisit this. Um, yeah, it probably won't be tonight now. It's coming up to nine o'clock and I haven't been sleeping that well. I'm pretty knackered. So um, yeah, I'll probably come back to this uh, tomorrow. But I hope you've enjoyed all you've uh, heard. Um, and I'll see you next time.